Hi guys, it's Mikey from Chaos Bushcraft Down Under. Today I thought I'd talk about knots. Now, in modern times, most people don't handle rope and knots and cordage day to day life. And they're a skill, like all skills, that needs to be practiced. And we all need those little sort of mind uh, tricks or links. Because if you get into a survival situation or bushcraft situation, and there's any stress involved, it's amazing what you forget. Anyway, I've run the knots down to what I think is important. And the most important thing with knots is my what I call my three easy rules. So it should be easy to tie, it should be easy to untie after they've been loaded, and easy to recognise, which is important if you have groups and you're relying on someone else to unrig or re-rig if you're in a sort of vertical or tough terrain situation. So I'm going to start off, which what I think is the most important of all knots. That's the figure of eight. So I like to think of it a fish. So a standing part of the rope around the back and through the middle. Okay. So this is an end knot. Well, I've tied it in the end of course. This knot here will not slide down the rope. Yeah. It is an absolutely fabulous shot. Now it can be used for joining ropes. Yeah, used to form an end loop. And uh, if you only know one knot, this is the one to know. So, tie the end knot for those of you who use some of the scale electric generation like myself. This is a dead easy. Same again, round the back, through the eye. So at this point here, I'm going to dress the knot. It basically means I'm just going to make it lay into itself better. So I'll pull those loops over. Pull it through, and there it is there. Rock solid knot. This was my favourite knot when I used to do abseiling into caves. So I'd always put this on the end of the rope before I threw it down the hole, just to make sure I didn't abseil off the end of a rope. Very important. Now, if you just wanted to abseil off a say around a tree or a boulder, you could have just formed that knot and passed the tail end through the loop but it means that you can't get it back. Okay. So, I'm sure you have an object, in my case an imaginary one. You can just form a single knot, follow it back through. So the, the, the gist of that is to keep it parallel with the strand. Okay. In this case, I've put a turn in it. Okay, so I came back in the outside, pulled it around. Now, a lot of climbing books say that the standing part, the load end of the rope, should always be to the outside of the knot. And for a short while I worked in a uh, place that makes abseiling harnesses. And it didn't seem to make that much difference on the load test. About 5%. Okay, so there we are. That's just, that tail's too short. So, there again. So that's the figure of eight. Now at some point you bushcraft and you're going to want to tie sticks together. And uh, the best hitch I find is the clove hitch. And it's a, it's a robust little knot. It doesn't like, well, I'll show you, having the load change in direction. Okay. So that is the basic clove hitch. It just self locks by pulling down there, which is fine as long as it's got a regular load. But if you were for some reason to do that, you can get it to slip. Anyway, the best way I know to tie it, and easy to remember, and if you're familiar with those pop up sunshades that go on your windscreen of your car, you already know how to do this. So it's thumbs up, thumbs down, roll the two knots together. 
and there she is. It's as simple as that. Now, because I came, came from a climbing background, I can do it one-handed. So I lay the rope over my hand, cross my palm, bring my hands around, back, pinch through, and there she is. And don't done one-handed. Now I could look, if it came to an anchor, I wanted to lock in climbing. I could just pop that on. So a great knot, it really is. Simply just two loops. At some point, you're going to want to string up a uh, a tarp, a hammock, and um, the taut line hitch is a great knot, but it's a knot that I always have to think about every time I use it. So, being able to tie up an effective knot in the middle of a rope that can take load in any direction is uh, a really a handy thing. That allows you to uh, tension a guy rope and all that. So, my best, this is the Alpine butterfly. Now this is my method, preferred method of tying it. Three turns around my hand like I just did. I reach through and grab the center strand, come around, pull the whole lot through, grab that, and tighten it. I've got two parallel on this side, crossed on the other side. Now this is a fabulous knot because it can take load in any direction, which is really useful for rigging. Or if you put that in your your um, your tarp and guy line, come around the tree, back through that, couple of half hitches, and you're away. Now, like all knots, there's different ways of tying it. That's my preferred method because you're not fighting the strength of the rope. And if you're using the rope that's a bit old and crusty, it's a real issue. Now the way a lot of the climbing books show you is to pinch it down at the base, go once, twice around, and it, as you can see there it's fighting me doing it here, and come back through the whole lot. And I just made a bright burk of that. So there it is, again, but I find that a much more difficult method to, to fashion than the way I showed you the first way. So really well, well worth knowing this knot in your arsenal. Alright, the next is the bowline. So at one stage this knot was banned in climbing, I was teaching you absolutely in classes, but it's a fabulous knot, so those of you that were scouts will already know this. So I form a, a letter P. So the rabbit comes out the hole, around the standing part, and back down the hole. So that's the basic bow line. Now some guys add a hitch in the tail. Other guys pass the tail end through the knot to make it even more secure. But personally, provided you know you can tie the knot wrong and it'll turn into a slip knot. Okay. But it's got its uses. And then we'll end it today with a, a double fisherman. Now double fisherman's a fabulous knot for joining two ends of a rope or joining two ropes together should, should you have a group. So basically start Finger out, go once, twice, and around, okay, sit there. Now technically, and for the most attractive, it should be handed. So the next one, do it the opposite way around. So that when it joins together, it snuggles into each other, each, each half. Okay, tails and opposites. That is a fabulous knot. It really is. It's great stuff. 
I reckon if you can manage these, you can manage most things to do with cordage. Anyway, I hope you found that informative, and as always, thanks for watching. Bye for now.